a farmer wants to build a new enclosure with two partitions. He has 60 meter of fencing to build the three identical adjacent enclosures, right? So this is a very interesting and common question and it teaches you many concepts. One, a farmer wants to build a new enclosure. We are assuming that to be rectangular, right? So our assumption here is rectangular. Most of the time it is mentioned. Okay, if not, let's work on it. This is kind of an open question, right? So wants to build a new enclosure with two partitions. So two partitions in between will be kind of like this. As soon as you do two partitions, do you see three enclosures? Correct? So that is interesting. I could have written with three enclosures, right? Okay. He has 60 meter of fencing to build the three identical adjacent enclosures. So this is very explicit statement. Three identical adjacent enclosures, right? So they are adjacent and they are identical. Okay, now let's work on it. So let's define some variables. We say let length be L and width be W. Okay, so in that case, we can say that the length is L. That means the whole length will take this as L. And width is this width. Width is W. Now when I say that he has 60 meter of fencing to build three adjacent means what? That means the perimeter. That really means that the perimeter is 60 meters correct that is sum of all the sides so sum of all the sides are there are two lengths right so we have l plus l and as far as widths are concerned so you have to put per partition here also right so that becomes the perimeter sum of all these sides two lengths and four w so you can write w plus w plus w plus w equals to 60 and that gives you an equation that 2 length plus 4w equals to 60. Correct? Now you recall this, this equation is very similar to the standard form which is ax plus by you can say plus c equals to 0 once I bring 60 to the left side. Do you see that? So this is kind of equation in standard form. Let me rewrite like that. So I could write this as 2l plus 4w minus 60 equals to 0. Is it okay? I can actually simplify this also, dividing each term by 2. So if I divide each term by 2, I get length plus twice width minus 30 equals to 0. So that becomes our equation in standard form. Correct? That becomes our equation in standard form. It links length and width for the given situation. Correct? Uh, now let's try to translate this into slope intercept form. Let's write this in slope intercept form. So when I say intercept, y intercept. Okay. That means we have to isolate any one variable. So let's isolate w. Let's isolate w. Okay. <clears throat> we'll get some fractions. That's fine. So we'll isolate w. So we have, we'll work with L plus 2W minus 30 equals to 0. Since I have to isolate W, I'll keep it here, take all other terms to the right side. So we get 2W equals to minus L plus 30. Dividing by 2, I get W equals to minus half L plus 30 divided by 2. Or we can say W equals to minus half L plus 15. Correct? So we have this situation represented in both the forms. Do you see that? So we could write this equation in one form and translate to the other. In the given situation, it was easier to get the standard form first, but there are no restrictions. Correct? <clears throat> now, we have isolated one variable 
that actually helps to simplify the equations. Now, if you isolate like this, in that case, W is dependent on L. Remember, then W is dependent on L. That means L is independent variable. Now, let's explore further the same equation of uh, related width and length. So what we really worked out is two different equations. One was <coughs> we got slope intercept form as w equals to minus half l plus 15. And the same equation we also could write as l plus 2w. Uh, uh, let me copy it from there. Minus 30 equals to 0. Correct. So we have these two forms of equation. Now we are going to work with these two forms and let us see how we can explore. <clears throat> this slope intercept form which we have here, it could be used to sketch the graph. So let's sketch the graph of the given function. So if I have to choose what should go into x-axis, what should go into the y-axis. From the equation it is clear that W is dependent on L and therefore L should be in the x-axis and W should be on the y-axis. Both the units are in meters, right? Both the units are in meters. To sketch a graph, we could use any one of these two equations. This equation could also be written as, as let me write this as L plus 2W equals to 30. Is it okay? We could write this as L plus 2W equals to 30 also. Okay, anyway. Now, if I take L as 0, if I take L as 0, then what do I get? I get a value of W as 15, right? I get W as 15, correct? Okay? And if I take W as 0, what do I get for L? So you will see <coughs> that we could use any of these situations, I mean, to plot this graph. The y-intercept is, is 15. That means when L is 0, we have a point here, which is 15, correct? So at L equals to 0, we have a point here, which is 15. And if W is 0, what is length? For that, we, this is a good equation to work with. Then length is 30, right? So length is 30. Let's say this is length. Joining these two, we get our function, correct? So joining these two, we get our graph. So let's join them. This line represents possible combinations of length and width. Do you see that? So we get possible combinations of length and width. <clears throat> Let's make a table to explore further. So what we can do now is, this is further exploring the same thing. Since length is our independent variable taken along the x-axis, we could take different values of length. We have already seen that if length is is 0, then in that case, width is 15, correct? Okay. Now, if I choose those as the values, what is the area? We'll explore what is the area. Area is length times width. So in this case, area is W. Practically, you cannot have length as, as 0, right? Practically, that is not a possible value. Correct? Now let's take different values of length. Let's take the value of length as 10. So if I use 10 as length, let's say 10, then W will be 15 minus 5 using this equation, right? W will be 15 minus half of L. So it is 15 minus 5, which is 10. Is it okay? And 10 times 10 will give me area of 100. Do you see that? Okay. If I take 12, as length in that case width will be 15 minus half of 12 right so this basically could be written as 15 minus half of length is it okay so 15 minus half of length which is 6 right so if I take away 6 from 15 I will get 9 here multiplying these two 9 times 2 is 18 and 9 times 1 is 9 plus 1 108 
if I increase the length to 14, I'll get the width as 15 minus 7, which is going to be 8. And 8 times 4 is 32, 3. 8 times 1 is 8 and 1. The area increases, correct? If I take this as 16, in that case, it will be 15 minus 8, and I get 7 here. Multiplying 7 by 16, we again get 112. So it seems that <coughs> great area, so greater area is almost here, is almost here. If I take a value, which is 18, for example, I'll get 15 minus 9, which is 6. And 6 times 18 will give me 108. So you see the values? What we see here is that the area increases for different dimensions, right? Somewhere in between, we might get the maximum area. Do you see that? Somewhere in between, we might get maximum area. So what you can do is, you can try a value 15 here. That will give you 15 minus 7.5. Is it okay? So let's use calculator since decimals are involved. We are not very good at it. So 15 minus 7.5 gives us, in decimals, 7.5. So this is 7.5. What is the area? 7.5 times 15 is the area, which in decimals is 112.5. So somewhere right in the bet between them, right? So we have these values as, I mean, sorry, 15 and 30, right in the center over here, somewhere, if we choose the dimensions, we might get the maximum area. So that dimension gives maximum area, which is 112.5 meters square. Right. It's free to share your comments and suggestions. Thank you and all the best.